The one thing that comes to mind for me that we've kind of realized um, at Herman Miller, and, and I, I'm so looking forward to sharing with you some things about you know, what we're faced with and what we're trying to do, um, but one thing that just hits us is that our work around the environment is really for people. It's for us to have clean air, clean water, um, to preserve our earth and minimize our waste, eliminate waste however we can. It, we always say it's not about the trees, it's not about the bees, it's not about the leaves, it's about us. So, um, so a little bit of, of who we are. History, because history really has been so instrumental in setting the stage for what we do today and, it, and the continue, continuation of that. And then our sustainability strategy, Earthright. Uh, we, we've spent a lot of time, um, spent a couple of years developing our new strategy. It's not quite new anymore. We actually have two years of actual results to our strategy. Uh, we launched it in 2013. So I want to go over what our goals are, and kind of how we're doing. Uh, we're about 100 years old. We went public in 70. We have almost 2 billion in sales. We have our headquarters in Zealand. And then we also have manufacturing in several sites in West Michigan, Holland, Spring Lake, as well as a couple in UK, one in China, um, one in Italy, and some assembly in um, Bangalore, India, where we have about 120 employees. And one of them is on my team. So that's Herman Miller. Um, over about 6,600 employees. I think where we're always asked, your work around the environment, how does it impact your business? Does it help your business? Does it cost you more? What's it doing for you? And there are so many intangibles, it's hard to put a cost savings number on it or a revenue generation number on it. And I know the Dow Jones analysts, they always tell me, well, just try, you know, try to, you know. So I think the key number here is our sales number because remember I said our customers are asking more and more questions. 99%, we've taken a look at all the questions we have coming in. 99% of all of our customers are asking something about the environment. Something. 25% of our customers are basing their questions predominantly around their caring and um, respect for the environment. So they're the ones who go into great detail, and um, they want to know that, we're, that we have things in order. So if you look at our sales, we can say uh, you know, roughly uh, you know, half a billion dollars is based heavily on the work that we do for the environment. So this stuff that we all do is very important. So it, reassure, and it reassures us that our customers are caring about it too. So for years we've said, you know, it's the right thing to do to minimize waste and prevent pollution and um, recycle as much as we can, get our air emissions down, reduce our hazardous waste, look at what's in our products, all of our processes. And, um, and now our, our customers, it's, it's really um, market demand now. It's like it, a must-have. So, okay, so this is our mission, Herman Miller's overall mission, inspiring designs to help people do great things. So we want to create and enable, implement designs that help people do great things and help organizations achieve what they are trying to achieve. So we're very customer focused and want to help people solve problems that they have um, in their, their organizations. And for 
the longest time we've been you know focused on the retail uh, commercial market so now we're branching into higher education we have a division that works on higher education a division healthcare and also uh, home home offices so one complaint that we kept getting was hey we want to get a chair for our home office and you guys don't make it very easy so we heard that loud and clear from a number of people that kind of nudged us along and of course we learned by listening to others and um, we have now a Herman Miller store link from our website where people can go out and uh, order one or two chairs so that's our business Ta -da, this is him I cannot tell you how hard I had to dig in the archives to find this. So, you know, my question before coming to Herman Miller was, you know, like, who's he? This is the Herman Miller. So you saw it here. Okay. Um, he never worked at Herman Miller a day in his life. But the history here, um, his daughter, Nellie, married a man named D.J. Dupree, and D.J. was an accounting clerk with a little furniture company called the Michigan Star Furniture Company, and this is back in the 1920s, and D.J. decided that he wanted to buy it, but he needed to borrow some money. So <laughs> that's where he got it. He got it from his father-in-law, and in honor of that, uh, named the company after his father-in-law, Herman Miller. This is DJ, a um, very devoutly religious man. And I just looked just yesterday. I said, you know, 28 years I've been trying to remember a quote from him that to me is like the huge umbrella and says it all about Herman Miller. And we'll try it again. A company must rightly be judged on its product and service, but it must also face scrutiny as to its humanity. So that's where the caring about people and, and so forth. And if we fast forward, this is DJ in his later years, um, he said that we would be a good corporate neighbor by being a good steward of the environment. So he was talking back in the 50s, talking about um, making sure that employees were connected to the environment, that they had a connection with the outside, natural daylight coming in, could see the change of seasons and daylight to you know, nighttime. And he also uh, established a guideline that whenever we built a new manufacturing space, it would be and remain 50% green space. So between his caring for people and his love of the environment, he really established the stage that I always pay um, homage to him uh, because through the years, I've seen the commitment continue from our, our senior management. And our CEO today, Brian Walker, he very much cares about what we do. He was very much involved in our sustainability strategy, and he watches our report card very closely. So, takes me back to when I was traveling. When I first joined Environmental Affairs, I'd been in the department about a month, and our director at that time, Paul Murray, some of you may know Paul, he's now the Vice President of Sustainability for Shaw Flooring in Dalton, Georgia. We miss him. Um, we have a great director now, too. <laughs> um, so um, Paul was scheduled to travel and do a lot of lunch and learns with our architects and designers. So that's kind of the 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 world that we live in um, they are the people who are recommending our furniture to go into spaces 
So new buildings, renovations. Um, so he was supposed to travel, and he was sick. Deathly ill the morning he was supposed to travel. So our admin person, Julie Lommer, is on the phone with the salesperson out in uh, Hartford, Connecticut. She's like, Paul's sick. He can't come out there now. You're probably wondering, what does this have to do with this? So uh, he can't come out there. He's sick. Can you cancel? Can you reschedule? And our salesperson, apparently, according to Julie, right, it's too late to cancel. Just send me a warm body from Herman Miller. I don't care who it is. I just need somebody. I'd been in the department about a month, but guess what? Um, so after a little deliberation, I got the lucky, uh, yeah. So I went out east to several places and heard, got, kind of got my first firing line, if you will, of questions from our customers. First question I could answer, yay! First question was, what is Herman Miller's environmental goal? Easy peasy, I knew the answer. I said it's to become a sustainable company. That's our goal. They asked me right away, by when? <laughs> oh dear. Um, I, I said, you know, honestly, um, I'm not aware of a date. You know, we believe in continuous improvement, right, as with anything else. And we're on this journey. We don't know if we will ever get to become a sus totally sustainable company. What does that mean exactly? And they said, oh, not good enough. They pushed back on me big time. <laughs> They're like, that's not good enough. We have our goals. We know what we need to do by when. Why don't you? OK. Heard you loud and clear. So I came back here to West Michigan and talked with Paul. And the next thing I knew, our goals um, we had a set of goals uh, launched back in 2004. And we now have new goals that have really been expanded, broadened our scope, sharpened our focus. We've learned a lot in 10 years. But what I didn't realize with goals and how you're doing to goals, to, um, you know, it really mattered to people coming through Herman Miller. I was amazed at their reaction. People from the investment community. They're like, wow, those are your goals? It's pretty cool. I'm thinking, OK, your goals. Um, another, another group, um, I remember meeting with some people from the EPA at our Chicago showroom. And they asked me all kinds of questions about our goals. Well, how are you going to do that? Well, we're going to try really hard. We have resources in place. It's nothing like secret or magical. And then they asked me, so what happens if you don't meet the goals? I said, well, we have to let him know why not and what we're doing about it, right? Put action plans in place. Things go wrong, corrective actions, do something about it. OK, so Brian looks at our results on a monthly basis, how we are doing to meeting our goals. So oh, I want, also want to mention that um, part of his compensation and his leadership team, their compensation is based on what our team does. We're like, yes, OK. So that can help drive behavior, right? So it is very important to. Um, us all. So uh, Brian has a balanced scorecard, so he has all the financials, all the marketing stuff, and our environmental results. So it's good to know that he's keeping an eye and keeping in touch with us because it means we have the support to do what we do. And actually, we've seen tough times at Herman Miller. So 2001, 2008, We've seen jobs being eliminated. I know, you know, I've been a little worried too. Remember I said I was in HR? My HR manager sat down next to me and he goes, Diane, I need to talk to you. Like, uh, little did I know, recycling custodial, sure, I can do that. Okay, so 
Earthrite. <coughs> this is this new sustainability strategy that we have. <coughs> and remember I said we do it about the, we do it for the people. Our marketing people don't, they don't get it yet. <laughs> so we see the tree and it's like, no, it's not a tree. I mean, we don't do it for the trees. So this is supposed to be, you know, in reverence to the earth and th this gentleman up on the ladder putting a crown on the tree. Do you see anything wrong with this picture? He's on the top. <laughs> What's my title? Corporate safety and sustainability. So my department is responsible for both. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And um, the little yellow gold thing up there at the top, it's supposed to be a crown, but does it look like anything else I've heard from others? So, like a what? A chair? Oh, okay. I guess, there you go, they win. <laughs> this table wins. I knew, I knew you guys. So yeah. Um, so this is what we have right now. If you go out to our website, look at our better, we call it our better world. Um, so our environmental advocacy work is in this umbrella called the better world. It's really our corporate social responsibility, um, along with our health and well-being, including safety, inclusiveness and diversity, and community. So community participation, our volunteering, and that kind of thing. So. Earthright. When we launched those goals back in 2004, um, there was, you know, like I said, quite a reaction to them. And through the years, we've, we've learned several things. Um, we see the report out from the UN Population Division looking at population growth, that is just exploding, and that the growth between now and 2050 in itself is what the population was in 1950. So we can see that you know more and more people on the planet that there's more and more demand for natural resources. So we need to identify what are the impacts that Herman Miller's having on the environment and what are we doing about those. It's very important. And I've had other companies ask people from other companies ask me including people at a small little architectural firm in a little town in Connecticut on a little stream Diane you know Herman Miller's this big place we have a little company what can we do I said you know what um, you know and I had my ISO 14001 hat on I said well, okay you identify all, all of the ways that you're impacting the environment all your environmental aspects and impacts, you evaluate those, you rank them, and you put programs in place to work on them, to improve them. They're like, oh, okay. They're like, well, what do we have here? I said, well, you have electronics, right? You're using electricity. Um, you use office supplies, toner, paper, right? So there's, there are things that everybody can do. So, <clears throat> the population growth, we also see a demand from our customers, as I've already mentioned, for increased transparency. Disclose to us what you're doing, how you're doing it, um, what are your processes, what are the chemicals in your processes, what are the chemicals in your products, what are you doing about that? So we said, you know what, um, we need to expand and renew our commitment to the environment, which is what Earthright represents. And I love Earthright for a couple of reasons, because I'm over here doing this Dow Jones thing, and every year they'd ask me, so what is Herman Miller's total water consumption? And I'd say, Paul, um, and we, we, had, we had the numbers, we have the numbers, but our, our original goal back in 2004 was zero water consumption, or zero, sorry, zero process water. So any, we wanted to eliminate as much, if not all, water out of our manufacturing operations. 
So when the Dow Jones would ask me total, I'm like, Paul, you know, these analysts are pretty smart. They're asking about total water. So part of Earthright is now expanding our goal to, or has expanded our goal to total water. And also I'd hear back from people, you know, I'd be out on the road going, uh, one of our original goals 2004 was a zero operational footprint. So how much have you reduced landfill, hazardous waste, air emissions? And I'd, I'd give the numbers, you know, we reduced it by 90 some percent, 90 some percent, and people would come back and say, you know, learning as we listen to people, they'd come back and say, it's great what you're doing inside your four walls, Herman Miller, but what are you doing outside your four walls? So what are you doing with your suppliers? What are you doing with your employees? So all of that's been taken into consideration in our Earthright strategy, okay? So the principles, so the lofty principles that um, my, my boss, Gabe Wing, our Director of Safety and Sustainability, and his boss, and his boss, and Brian Walker, CEO, um, they, like I said, they worked on this for a long time. I'd see Gabe coming in, <laughs> like, wiped out, working really hard on trying to figure this out, what was important to us. And we said, okay, we want to share an unprecedented amount of information as much as we can. So we're working towards that end. We know we can't do it alone, so we have to engage with others and to get it done. And we want to treat not only our products, but our processes as living things. So we talk a lot about regenerative design at Herman Miller. And you know what? If there's one thought I would leave you with today, I should have started with that. Actually, there's two thoughts. We do it for people. Okay, you've heard that, right? Second thought is, with all of this, really the common thread is, are we making the best choices that we can? So, again, there's no magic to it. It's just, are we making the best choices? And that's in everything we do. So, our themes are, really our goals are driven by these three themes, resource smart. So, again, population growing, demand on resources. We want to be as responsible as we can with the materials that we're using, with water, with energy. So our resource smart goals, guess what goals they are? Our waste goals, our water goals, and, or I should say our water goal, and our energy goals. Eco-inspired design, it's really using the best design for processes and products. And community-driven is doing it together with everyone in our community. So not only our employees, suppliers, customers, uh, right, DEQ, uh, nonprofit organizations, so um, doing it together. So these are the things that drive our work every day. These are the things that we're reporting on, okay? Anybody here nuts and bolts people want to see what our goals are? What are, what are, you, what are you guys doing? Okay, what are we actually doing? Resource smart, so waste, water, energy. We want to, you know, we have a zero waste goal. I remember when I started back in the late 80s as a production supervisor, I saw these banners out in the, you know, different areas, zero landfill, zero landfill, zero landfill. It was being drilled into us. So we have several facilities, I can't remember, six or seven that are zero landfill. And we are working really hard on dealing with the last couple of items. And we have a composite number where we take tons of landfill, hazardous waste, and VOCs and put those together. So our goal is zero, and we're not going to stop until we get to zero. So I think we were at, like, I want to say a little bit less than 300 tons total. If I look back to 
Um, our baseline for our 2004 goals was 1993. 1993, we started with 14,500 tons. We're down to less than 300. So we're, we're drilling on that one. So what are, we want to use only what we need, be very responsible with it. And it's total water. Yay! Total! Woohoo! Yay! So our goal, or our new baseline is 2013. So that's our new baseline. And then we had we have we just as end of May, last May, we finished our fiscal year 15. So we have two years of actual numbers. And our goal for water is to reduce it by 50%. And looking at the amount of water that's used outside of manufacturing was very eye-opening. We're like, oh my gosh, opportunity there, big time. So um, a lot of conversations happening there. And then our energy goals, um, we continue to have a reduction goal for traditional energy. We also, we want to reduce our traditional energy from our baseline by 50%. And I I'm thinking that's, difficult because um, we've always had, or as long as I can remember, we've had energy reduction goals. So we want to cut it in half, and we also believe that renewable energy is very important. So we want, at the end of our fiscal year 2023, we want 50% of our energy that we're using to be from renewable sources, whether it be on site or locally. And going back to our original goals in 2004, we wanted to have 100% um, renewable electrical energy. So we achieved that on May 1st of 2010. And I've had customers ask me, so how'd you do that? I said, well, we have our on site energy center that built, that um, incinerates. Uh, like 22 million pounds of wood waste every year. And we also um, are involved in a power purchase agreement in a wind farm and then renewable energy credits. And I've been challenged on that. It's like, oh, renewable energy credits. So, you know, as my boss says, they get kind of snooty people sometimes that, you know, okay, you're buying your way to renewable energy. We're like, we see them as very valid um, programs that are generating renewable energy and putting it back into use. So, um, and it's been kind of difficult, but I think now it's getting um, better that we can work with our local utilities. Hi. <laughs> Shout out for consumers energy. All right. Um, so there are more opportunities for renewable energy and um, we have a full-time energy manager who works on that along with our site leads. So there's a lot happening there. Um, so our two goals, reduce energy in half, 50% renewable. Okay, so many ways to measure energy consumption. We have chosen to do it in terms of intensity. So th what we're using divided by a million dollars of sales. So we know there are many ways to measure, but we said we need to put a stake in the ground and that's what we, so that's how we measure that. Okay, eco-inspired design. Again, making the best choices. Are we using the safest, oops, safest chemistry? Are we using recycled materials? Can the products be used in a closed loop system? What about the life cycle impacts of the product? So these are the S, these here are the aspirational goals. And our hard and fast goals for products to help us get to these aspirational goals. Number one, we want 100% of our products approved by our internal design for the environment in, uh, protocol, which is based very much on the cradle to cradle philosophy. So we're looking at our products down to the parts per million, right? We report stuff to these ladies, so I need to be nice, okay. So um, we're trying to get as much information as we can from our suppliers, because guess what? These life cycle assessments that we have done on our products, you know what they've told us? 
We're not really a heavy duty manufacturer, but more of uh, assembly and some metal forming and woodworking, but a lot of assembly. So about 80% of Herman Miller's impacts we determined from these life cycle assessments, they are coming from our suppliers. So it makes sense going back to those people who would ask me, well, what are you doing about your suppliers and the whole supply chain? So we have a very active program with our suppliers. Um, we want 100% of our product to be level three certified. And just a, a real quick uh, overview, level is a certification to a standard called the E3 standard developed by the trade association for office furniture called BIFMA, Business and Institutional Furniture Manufacturers Association, where there was a risk at one point that the furniture companies were trying to decide how to evaluate the sustainability of any given product. So rather than each company developing their own, BIFMA got us all together, consensus-based, and now we have this wonderful multi-attribute standard that talks about materials, water, energy, chemical management programs. Um, there's a social piece, ISO 14001, LEED certified buildings. You can get corporate points, facility points, product points. Level three is the highest. And I think we're at about 51% of our products being at level three. So we want all of them level three. And we also want, this is an age old problem, we want to be able to take back 125,000 tons of product. Huge dilemma in the furniture industry about what to do with old product. So I even had a very passionate architect ask me one day, why don't you put 1-800 Herman Miller under your product so we can ship it back to West Michigan when it wears out? We said, you know, we don't think that's the right thing. So uh, we've partnered with a company, Green Standards in Toronto, where they have a, a huge network of nonprofits. They can help us come in and help a customer just take everything, our furniture, others' furniture, appliances, electronics, office supplies, you clear it out and either resell, uh, donate, or recycle. So the, really the goal is to keep it out of the landfill and um, do, do what's right. So those are our product goals. Here's the repurpose program, and um, we have a lot of things in place to uh, working with our salespeople to help educate our customers. On the community-driven side, we want to um, re-energize our employees and get our suppliers involved. And how are we doing? I know this probably looks really small out here. So how are we doing on our waste goals? Up at the top here, you see green. So we are blowing our waste goals away, wastewater energy. Or we saw our SMART goals. Um, on the community-driven side, we have a lot of suppliers, a lot of employees engaged. So that's going really strongly. The yellow part is with our products. Uh, we are um, close to our goal, but we were a little shy on the, um, getting things approved against our protocol. Um, it's, it's quite involved working with our product engineers and suppliers to get things how we want them. Um, and then we're, we're, doing, we're doing okay on the level certification. Um, so our goal last year for level three was 33%, we hit 51%. And where we're really struggling is to, um, to, get, to get the logistics and the flow going with that take back program. So we've started uh, partnering with Goodwill Industries to, um, to bring them in and get them involved. And so all the details are being worked out on that right now. Working really hard on all, all of these things. So this is what drives us. So, this is where we're at. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Thanks to the DC.